This is Chris Gerald's Everyday VBA. This video we're going to be looking at, uh, we're solving the problem, is it a variable? Is it an object? Do you need to set it or do you not need to set it? And so that is the challenge. I gave you some different variable types here real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these really quick and then I'm just going to go through one of the reasons why we do this. If you're not familiar with Macro Monday, I post a Macro Monday challenge on Monday, post the solution on Friday. And uh, this one is really kind of more educational. Uh, but hopefully you're able to get something from it and this this whole topic of why do i have to do that why does that even why does that ever even make sense so hopefully we're able to clear that up so first thing we're doing is we're just going to go through each one of these well this first one a number it's a variable okay now how you know it's a variable is if it's a single chunk of data and that single chunk of data goes into a single kind of uh, box you know it's a, it's a variable so uh, is a date uh, Date is actually also a variable. Now that's a single string or it's a single, you know, single text. Um, anything that's just singular is going to is going to be a variable. Now, if we get to a worksheet, now a worksheet has parents, right? So a worksheet has a parent of a workbook. It's got children of ranges and cells. It's got names. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do with any worksheet um, that makes it more uh, multifaceted. And so really all. Anytime you find something that has more than one facet or more than has a parent or a child, it's going to be an object. So this is an object. Okay, a chart. Now that's a little bit, you know, most times we're not we're not actually doing any anything with charts. Like sometimes uh, it's one of those that less frequently used. You're definitely going to use worksheets. You're going to use workbooks. But chart, what is it? Well, uh, within the chart itself, um, it actually falls on a page, so it probably has a parent of a sheet. Um, it also has different lines and different objects within it. So that actually is also an object. Okay, If something's true or false, well, that's called a Boolean, um, a Boolean operator, true or false, one or zero, and that is actually a variable. Okay, array. Now, arrays are a little bit different because arrays are, you can have, it basically, when you store the data, it can be like a sheet, meaning that you've got a, a two by two array, which is just a box. You got to sell here, sell here, sell here, and sell here. Um, that could be a little confusing because you could think, oh, well, that that you know that does have more than one things. But the reality is, it's, it's just a single set of data, and so that actually is also a variable. Okay, now a range. No, you know, think about it. Does it have a parent? Does it have a child? It does it have a parent? Range falls on a worksheet. That's its parent. It does it have children? Those are cells. And so that's actually going to end up being an object. Okay. Same thing with the workbook. Now the workbook actually does have a parent. You don't think of that that much, but the parent is actually Excel. Um, and it does have children. The children, it has grandchildren and great grandchildren. So a workbook would have um, Excel as the parent. The child would be a worksheet. The grandchild would be a range. Uh, the grandchild, the great grandchild, would be a cell. And so that is an object. Now, to determine whether to set it or not, it's actually very simple. Um, if it's a variable, you don't need to set it. If it is, if it's uh, if it's an object, you set it. It's really it's it's no more complicated than that. Now let me just show you a really uh, just kind of a quick trick on these, um, and really one of the reasons why I actually use um, we use variables and declare them is because you get to use access to IntelliSense. So I've got my Visual Basic editor open. We're gonna, we're going to call this. Um, OBJ. Okay, I also have a locals window open here. So there's a couple reasons why um, I will set set my variables. There's a, and I'll just show those to you here real quick. So first thing we're going to dim RNG as range, and that's your that's your that's how you declare a variable, uh, and that, that that's range is actually an object. That's how you declare objects or variables. So you could go dim. Um, x as as variant, which is a which is actually a variable type. Um, the reason I do I set I set my variables a lot. So if we go set RNG equal to selection, and that's just going to give me whatever that selection is. The nice part about declaring your variables like this, and or declaring your objects specifically, is it gives you access to your IntelliSense. So if I go RNG and I hit dot, anytime if you hit dot, you're dealing with an object. 
If it pulls up this IntelliSense, you have an object on the line. This is a, this is totally an object. Um, in this case, um, you know we obviously know it's an object because we we dimmed it as an object. But we could go activate, right? And that would give us the same thing. But the other thing that you can do is if you're doing sheets and you do dot and something comes up, you know that sheets are an object. Um, whereas, you know, if I type in X, it's not going to give me anything, right? If I do X dot, it's not going to give me anything. It's actually going to give me an error. Um, and that's not something that I necessarily want to do. Um, the other thing that's nice, uh, the other thing that you can actually see on your X equals 100, I'm actually going to execute this code. Um, and you'll notice that I've got uh, the type, right? It's a range, that's a variant, they're both empty. Um, the difference between an object and a variable is a variable will show up as empty. And this is my locals window. If you don't have that uh, showing up, you're just gonna wanna go to view and you're gonna wanna look at your locals window. I like the locals window because it gives me access to just the view of all of my variables that I have running. So when I hit F8 here, it's gonna basically turn that into a plus, right? And when I hit plus, it gives me all the properties and methods for that um, specific object. And so if you have stuff like this, I mean, look at all the stuff on that. I mean, it's got so many different things that you can do. You can't just save it in a single variable, right? Um, and so that is why those are objects, and that's why you have to set them. Now, I've got x equals 10, right? You'll notice, uh, I'm going to see if I can shrink this down real quick. We're going to shrink this down, but you'll notice that a variable is just going to have a value. It's going to have a single value. Now, if we did an array, so if we went our um, o array equals to um, rng, this is going to this should give me a one by one array. Let's go ahead and drag this up here real quick, and it actually gives me no because it's only a single single object. So let's change that. Um, I'm just changing my selection. So actually, since that was a one by one array, it actually didn't pull in, the actually, it didn't convert that to an array. It actually just pulled that into straight text. Um, so we're gonna do this again. And you'll notice that it doesn't get, this. the type is still a variant, um, and you still get that, what looks like a worksheet, but really it's just a bunch of single uh, variables within an array, or basically within a, kind of a, a grid pattern. Um, and that's why you don't have to set arrays. Now, this is probably one of my favorite thing to do is to take my data from within a range and throw it into an array uh, because your code just speeds up dramatically. Um, and that's a that's kind of an in-depth view of why you set something while you don't, whether something's a variable or whether it's an object. And the key is, is does it have parents or does it have a lot of things attached to it? Um, you know, is there is there a, a name to that thing, right? So a worksheet has a name, and it has a code name, and it has, you know, it has cells and rows and columns, and it has a bunch of things um, that's associated with that. And if it's not, and it's just a simple data, simple data point, then most likely that's going to be a variable, and you don't have to set it. So that is your solution to the Macro Monday challenge of variable or object. Hope this helped you out. Um, it can be incredibly frustrating when you're trying to go through this stuff. And I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you're subscribing to the Everyday VBA Challenge or Everyday, Everyday VBA channel on YouTube. If you like the video, give me a like. If you, um, leave a comment if you have one. And I hope you have a great day.